There are other things on your meal that can affect this blade, and we quite often go, it's the set. And we've experienced it over and over. Ooh, in our 50 years of, of working on saw blades, that there are, other, there are a lot of other factors more than just the blade itself. It can be a lot of things in someone's meal. We've got the experience with blades and with the sawmills. We've spent our whole lives really working on these things. My brother, myself, people have been with us 25 and 30 years working on these things. And so we have an understanding that uh, we try to impart to the people that work with us. And if you'll give us a call, we can, you have problems, we can help you solve them. We're just confident in that. There's something going on if you ha are having problems and we can help you solve faster, uh, smoother. We're gonna try to show you about this gouging of the wood. Uh, Sometimes that's hard to figure out. It can be roller guys, it can be adjustments, it can be your band wheels, all kind of things. But it also can be the set or the sharpness. You gotta have a sharp blade, a set blade, and you gotta have your machine adjusted right and you should be able to saw wonderful lumber. Now, all lumber cut on these mills is called rough cut lumber. So don't expect it to be plain. Once in a while or all, pretty regular, you get blades that are nice and smooth, super smooth, but all blades are not necessarily that way. And, and if you're having that problem, I would look at roller guides. I'd look at adjustments uh, of several different types that we can talk about and probably will talk about out at the sawmill and we can help you get all that worked out. So we're gonna set this blade up on the setter and, and look at uh, set and even show you how that's affected by how you're measuring and different things about it. Okay, so we've set the blade up on our, our setter situation. I'm around the back. This is not really where you'd normally be, but uh, we want to look at this in the straightaway. I've got a fairly straight area here. I can move it a little and be a little more straight. But I want to be here versus in the, in the curve, and I'll try to show you why about that in a little bit. But what it's about is I can, it's just easier to clamp. If you're trying to clamp in the, in the curve, you're not going to hold the blade good. I mean, it's pretty, pretty simple there. So we were, we were showing a minute ago about what a thousandth is. And I've got this set on zero, got it pretty snug here on my, my thumb wheel. But look at that, if I turn, if I wiggle that blade, and that's why I don't like it in the corner, if I twist this blade, I went up two, if I twist it the other way, it went down two. There's four thousandths right there. So we wanna be in straight away as we can, clamp it. Uh, and, and, and so, and I'm actually clamping this in the body of the blade. I don't want to take the chance that I've got a burr on the back. Again, a burr can be two thousandths easy just from grinding. Uh, so, so I try to stay in the body as close as I can. Sometimes you can even get on the bent tooth, and uh, even this one, the tooth has been away by two thousandths because, as I said, it's coming toward me, but it actually dropped a couple thousandths. So the whole, it, it bent down a little bit deeper into that body is what happened. So all of these things, again, we want to be perfect, but sadly, I'm not a totally perfect person, and, and my, none of us are, so we've got to get as close to perfect as we can, and so this is, these are the things we're talking about. So I want to check, using my checker, the body here and, and clamp the body. Sometimes you'll find with, with blades, brand new blades, that, that the body is not even totally perfect. It can be out a few thousand, so all those things can come into play as well. So, so I just clamp in two or three places and I'll come back here. Now when I come up and I get on that set, look at there, we're at 20, 24 and a half. So 23, 25, 27, 28. I like to be a little wider on my set, uh, have a little more set than, than be too low. Our, our experience is, is 15 thousandths is just too low. You cannot cut enough kerf out to let the blade come through. 20 thousandths will work if you're wanting, if, if you're in cold weather, just narrow curve drags the sawdust out a little bit better. But the most forgiving blade, if you're sharpening and running things yourself, is, is to go even 26, 27, 28, 30 even, it doesn't hurt. We're gonna set some at 40 and just see what it does. And we'll see, try to look at how much sawdust we leave behind, those kind of things. So we want to check one side and then uh, with the set that way, I come over, make sure I'm, I'm zeroed out here. And, and you can see even from one side to the other, there's a little variation in here. 
that has to do with the body of the blade. And so when I come up on a straight tooth, I'll, I'll be in the body here. I was a little too high up. That's on zero. I'll check right here. We're zero. So if I get a, a set tooth set toward me, we're at 26. So we were about 24 to 25. We're 25, 26 on this side. In, in this world that we're living in, that's pretty near perfect because <laughs> a thousandth is such a small amount. If I, if I put that on zero, and that I did, if I twist it, you see I'm getting two to three thousandths each, each way on this. You may not can see that, but it's moving two to three thousandths. You can probably see it's moving just by me twisting just a little bit. So if I come over here in this curve, I want to show you something there. So, so I came over here in the curve. That would be where your band wheel would be kind of. This would be your, more your straightaway that we were showing over here. So if I, if I come up here and I clamp this on, zero it out, watch, watch how much that moves. 10, 12, 15 thousandths on this dial indicator. And now if I really tighten it down super tight, you can see my zero change a little bit. It's still moving quite a bit. I, I, I've got it now pretty much tight as I can get it. It doesn't seem to go back the other way, a little bit right there, but this way it goes a lot. So you can see that a little bit of flex in your blade even is affecting these thousandths that we're talking about. So uh, we want to get it at the best place. That would be in the straightaway. And then we want to check it, and then we want to get it as near to the same on both sides. In the old days, with the circle mill, some of y'all may be a little familiar with that. We, grew, we cut our teeth on cutting cross ties and circle mills. You would put a little lead in the blade because it tend to want to go one way or the other. And so we don't, we don't want one side or the other way off because that will tend to lead it, will tend to pull it. And, and different things can happen. It can heat up the teeth on one side and then cause it to go up and down. And you, a lot of times, you know, people are calling and we'll say, well, what's the first reaction that you saw? And they go, it just goes all over the place. Well, that's cause the blade's getting a little bit hot. And, and when this material gets hot, it stretches. This is kind of a spring material when you get down to it. We want it to not conform to some, when it goes around that wheel and stay like that, you get regular old mild steel, it'll stay in that curve. We want it to straighten out and then go around the, around the band wheel again. And so uh, this is a spring steel, but when you heat up spring steel, spring won't act right anymore. So we want to run these blades in the best way to keep them as cool as we can and to, to make them run. You get build up on the side from, from uh, sawdust or sap. Uh, even, even in hardwoods, you can get that little bit of sap that'll, that'll crust up on there. You're talking about that right there, maybe five thousandths, and I know for a fact I've done it. Once that pine tar or our old southern yellow pine builds up on that thing, you won't saw in it anymore. So that's why we put a little diesel to, to keep that rubbed off. All that stuff's important because that does affect the set that you're dealing with. So now we'll come around and we'll look at the setter and show you a little bit about the setter and what we're doing. And then we'll go out in the next video probably and we will run this blade and let you see how it works. We're running this blade and, and I'll reiterate that, but it's about 25 thousandths. We're really close on the 25 thousandths on this blade. So we'll make sure it's good and sharp and we'll get out there and we'll run this blade, get an idea how fast we can push it. We may saw a few boards and then we may say, let's just see what we can do and see if we even break it or jump it off or what it'll do if we, if we shove it too hard. If everything is perfect, everything's not always perfect, but if everything's perfect, we can choke off the meal in the cut. So that's pretty amazing. Okay, so I'm gonna show you a little bit about our setter. This is not gonna be a full demonstration at all, but just to show you how uh, we do think how important setting is, so much so that we put dial indicators on our setter so you can see. You don't have to look at every tooth again. Uh, you bend one, one, one amount and bend another, another, uh, uh, the same amount, and sometimes one springs back a little bit more according to, the, to the, the hardness of the tooth here, this black that you see on the very tip where it's hardened extra to make it last longer in the cut, those kind of things. But we just have a push handle here and it indexes it over three teeth because you got a straight, a right, and a left. And then we just pull our handle up, and when it gets to the max right there, uh, we'll be right on the 25, 26 thousandths. And so we, we pull past, we index again. We have our bending tabs in here, our, our bending dies. 
and and they bend. I don't have them set now because this this blade's already been set. I've got them back out of the way. But when you press down and put pressure on, you get to see what your teeth are. Now you don't have to watch that every time. You can just be talking and and going. And as long as you set eight or ten of them and you look, then you can check one along if you want to. And you go, okay, I'm going. You know, I got it going. And so. You don't have to uh, spend a lot of time looking at that. Once you have it set up, then you can just look once in a while. I, I wanted to make it clear as well, if you're off two or three thousandths one way or another, and we're going to show this, uh, that you will still get good boards, good cut. Two or three thousandths is not what's gouging your wood or causing you not to cut properly. We'll show that because we're going we're gonna to set some and let you see the sets off. Uh, later on, we're going to run this one first, and then we will show different kinds and what it does. I may even cut some teeth off, four or five teeth off of the blade, and run it and let you see what it does. And you'll be surprised, they can be a few teeth missing, and it'll still do a good job. So that'll be it for today, and we will see you next time.